Oh my gosh, I can't grow anything because the bug's gonna eat it. <laughs> uh, something is eating the kale. I've tried a couple different remedies and I just finally I thought I would ask the experts, not me, but you. But there's been something attacking it from the get-go. Lots of damage. So let me walk you through it. It has holes. We're doing a little uh, winter pest control. There's a few ways that we can actually get rid of these guys. All right, so now that we've been talking about the cabbage looper, we want to talk about the three good ways to get rid of them. It will cause significant damage to your crops. Learn how to find them and pick them off with your hands. I'm just going to grab them. Kind of hidden in there. It's still tough to see them. Just kind of grab them off of there. Obviously, when you see something like this, you have a caterpillar chewing insect. The insect that comes from that white moth that flies around psychotically. I mean, they're all for moths or butterflies of, or something. There's one in there. And these are probably going to turn into butterflies. I just don't know which ones. And it's amazing how quickly they come. I mean, five or six days and not really being able to spray. The little yellow butterflies are still flying, and we haven't had enough frost to wipe them out. So. Don't stop, continue with the BT. Um, you could also use the Captain Jack's, uh, what is that called? Dead bug, dead bug gone, something like that. Anyhow, you can look that one up. The plants are not of the highest quality and they often have aphids, so look at that. The aphids have been basically um, breeding on there. Like, look at that, all nasty little aphids totally on there, right? And I could take, make some neem oil and Dr. Bronner's mix it up and spray it or something. Or I could sit there with my fingers and try to crush them. But that gets like really messy and ooey and gooey. But you really get frustrated with the holes in your broccoli and your cabbage and your cauliflower and your kale and your Swiss chard, things like that, that uh, just seem to be plagued by chewing caterpillars. This might also help those that are suffering from tomato hornworm. Again, a very frustrating pest in the garden. If you go away for two, three days at a time and you get to a hornworm, you might come back with half a plant decimated. I've seen horrible, horrible aftermath stories of tomato hornworm. This will also help with those of you that are battling with tent caterpillars in your peach trees and your, your pear trees and apple trees. This will also help with people suffering from leaf curling caterpillars on your uh, peppers. Growing a backyard full of food is easy, but keeping this produce from pest damage or from being eaten by the local wildlife can be a little bit challenging at times. A quick video on what is eating my garden greens. Here's the deal. Whenever you plant food, things come to eat it. And oftentimes we want to be the ones who eat it, but sometimes there are other things that come to eat whenever we plant that food, right? Stink bugs, ah! squash bugs, ah! cucumber beetles. Ah! Hey, if you're growing vegetables sooner or later, you're going to have problems with... There is a menace in the garden. It's known as white flies. These little bastards will attach themselves to your leaves, to your stems and all over your plants and basically they will suck the fluids out. They'll stunt the growth, cut them off and kill them. If it's them or the plant, I choose them. I'm gonna throw the kitchen sink at them. From the look of these shredded leaves, it appears that something has tried to turn these cabbages into coleslaw. With vegetables growing so rapidly, there's one thing that's pretty much inevitable, pests. Just look at these black fly on my beans, for example. It's frustrating. Take a pragmatic approach and accept that pests will always raise their unwanted heads. We'll offer some tips for protecting your plants and controlling unwanted pests. The Castile Soap makes an effective spray for eliminating garden pests, such as aphids, whiteflies, mealybugs, spider mites. This is called an insecticidal soap. So I found my squash plants all wilted up and it prompted me to look into some diseases and pests that affect the squash and uh, cucumber family plants or gourd family plants and one of them is the cucumber beetle and I have a striped cucumber beetle and I'm finding it in the flowers of my squash plants there's one right there these are the striped cucumber beetles but you can also get spotted cucumber beetles now the problem with the cucumber beetles because I'm getting overrun with cucumber beetles, squash bugs, and vine borer moss. 
those nasty six-legged creatures that none of us love, especially my wife. She does not love aphids. We are out in the garden and insects, they can be good and they can be really bad yeah, and pesky. Bad ones. So yeah. what do you do? What should you be looking for to try and fight them? This right here, that uh -oh. there is where you walk to the garden and you go, oh! And she's talking, John, why don't you make a video about like, all the plants that don't get bugs because she's kind of lazy she doesn't like washing off bugs and i'm kind of lax on spraying stuff sometimes you know i mean i do it when i can but i don't really just like to spray stuff unless i really have to today we're going to talk with you about the five garden bugs that we hate the most uh, we're going to help you identify them and we're going to talk a little bit about how we're trying to control the population so here is a colorado potato beetle larvae munching away on some of my potato plants. I don't know specifically which beetle it is. It could be a number of them. Um, but what's good about that is um, I wanted to show you Captain Jack's dead bug brew. We've had a mild winter, lots of rain, and so a lot of pests are exploding. And we're just going to basically suffocate these insects by spraying them. And this is going to have to be done probably once every couple weeks. I'm out in the garden today to show you this trick on how to kill earwigs and keep them off your crops. Or in growing citrus we also have to pay attention to the problems with insects and there are several that do affect the plant pretty severely. You always want to take a look at the back sides of the leaves because a lot of times the critters will be hiding on the back side. I typically have a lot of pressure especially from rabbits coming in and nibbling on my garden and just eating these transplants down to the stem. And they ask, I have had trouble with rabbits getting my cantaloupe plants. Both of them have been hit pretty hard and it's pretty obvious to me because when I walk out in the morning and I check these plants, I can see those stupid moths just floating around the garden. They don't have a care in the world. They don't care. They're just living life. Well, I don't want them to live life anymore. If these worms are still alive or if they're dead. As you can see, I've got lots of holes still in the Brussels sprouts. Just a few minutes ago, I sprayed this worm, which is a cabbage looper. Oops. And he appears to be dead. Down below, we've got problems, okay? So I've already gotten some. So I caught the culprit last night, uh, which is one rat. And I'm sure where there's one, there's others, but I caught one last night. But I'm gonna show you what I use to um, rid myself of these, these critters. I'm on to you. You thought you could get away with it, didn't you? You thought no one would find out. You thought no one would know. But I've been watching you. I've had an eye in the sky watching down and I've found out who's been stealing my squash seeds. Today we're going to talk about the number one nuisance in my garden, which is voles or field mice. It's the same animal. When you hear somebody say that neem oil is safe for a pollinator, I want you to know it's not. Neem oil can, will, and does kill any insect it comes into contact with. It's an oil-based pesticide. It's not just the active ingredient in neem that we are worried about. It's the fact that it coats the body, clogging the breathing pores along the side of the body, so that insect actually suffocates. And that will happen to your honeybees, your butterflies, your caterpillars that are going to turn into butterflies, anything 